In the last video, we ran the process at the lowest speed. Now let's try running the process at full speed and see what happens. So I will reset, increase the speed to maximum and click go. Okay, we got this error which says fail to perform step one in right stage enter input value on page enter input value. No elements match the supplied query terms. Now let's understand this error exactly. So we will copy this error and paste it on a notepad. Then click OK. Then let's open this action page by right clicking on it and click view action in object studio. Now let's take a look at the error. It says fail to perform step one in right stage enter input value on page enter input value. So the enter input value page is this one which we already opened and in that the right stage enter input value is this one. And the step one is nothing but if you double click this stage you can actually have multiple steps under this action tab which will be performed one after the other. So the step one is basically the first step. We only have one step here. So that's what it says. Fail to perform step one in right stage enter input value on page enter input value. And the reason is no elements match the supplied query terms, which means Blue Prism is not able to find this input value element, which is basically the input field where we enter the amount. But why is that? If you look at the web page, this field is present. So why do we get this error? Well, this is because we set the process to maximum speed and when it ran, it first launched the application and before even the web page could get loaded completely, it started looking for the input field. That is the reason why it says it cannot find the element. So the only way to handle this is to ask Blue Prism to wait for a few seconds before it goes to the next step. Let's see how to do that. I'll first click reset, then go back to the object studio. And here you can see the wait stage, which will allow you to pause the process for a few seconds before it goes to the next step. So if I drag and drop a wait stage, it comes with two parts, the wait and timeout. If you double click wait, you can specify the timeout value here in seconds. So let's say if I give a timeout value of 10 seconds, click OK, delete this link, move the wait stage between start and enter input value and then join the links and then when the process reaches this stage it'll wait for 10 seconds and goes to the timeout stage and from there it goes to the enter input value but in this case every time it has to enter a value in the input field it is going to wait for 10 seconds we may not need the process to wait 10 seconds every time. We may need 10 seconds only when the application is launched for the first time. And after that, for each time it has to enter value in the input field, we probably need only a shorter duration like three or five seconds. So it is not a good idea to add the wait stage here. Instead, we can add it at the end of launch stage. So it waits only 10 seconds during the launch. So we can delete this, join the link, then go to the launch stage and delete this link, add a wait stage, give 10 seconds, and then join the links. Now save the object, close IE, go to the process studio, Click refresh. Then I don't want to run the entire process, so I will set a breakpoint here at enter from currency so that the process stops when it reaches here. Now click reset and go. Okay, the process stopped when it reached the breakpoint. If I go to the web page, I can see that the value entered successfully. So basically after the launch stage, it stopped for 10 seconds before it proceeded further. Now, how do you decide this timeout value, whether it should be 10 seconds or 15 seconds or just five seconds? 
This time it worked fine, but what if the web application is really fast and we don't need 10 seconds, which means we are wasting a lot of time unnecessarily waiting. On the other hand, what if this application is very slow or if there is a network bandwidth issue and this page takes like 15 or 30 seconds to load. We will end up again with the same issue where Blue Prism will throw an error stating that it is not able to find the element. This is where Blue Prism gives you the option of dynamic wait. Let me show you what it is. I will click reset, go back to the object studio and open the wait stage. You can see there is a section called actions. Now here you can tell this wait stage to wait only until it finds the input value field and not the entire 10 seconds duration. So drag and drop the input value, select the condition check exists and you can see that it is a flag type and it's already set to true. So we are telling this wait stage to check if the input value exists and proceed further. I'll click OK. You can see that an additional point has appeared between the wait and timeout. So if I link this point to the end and then run the process, it'll come to the wait stage and keeps checking if the input value field exists on the web page. And as soon as it sees that field, it'll take this path. It'll not wait until the 10 seconds is completed. But if it cannot find the input value field, even after 10 seconds, then it will time out and it'll go to the timeout stage. So let's try this. We will change the timeout value to say 30 seconds. Click OK. Save the object. Now go to the Process Studio. Click Refresh, Reset and Go. Okay, you can see that it did not wait for 30 seconds, but still filled the input value field. That is because as soon as it saw the input value field, it went to the next stage instead of waiting for 30 seconds to time out. You need to really plan well on where you want to have a wait stage. So in this process, we want a wait stage after the web page loads or refreshes every time. The first one is obviously after the launch stage and we have already taken care of it. Next, we need one after the click go stage because when the go button is clicked, the page is reloaded to show the result. So I'll click reset, go to the object studio and in the click go page, I will delete this link and drag and drop a wait stage. I'll double click. This time, instead of input value field, we will check if the result exists because the next step after clicking the go button is to read the result. So I'll drag and drop result, select the condition check exists and ensure that the value is set to true. I'll then set the timeout value to say 20 seconds and click OK. I'll then join the links, save the object, go to the process studio, Remove the breakpoint, click refresh, reset, and go. All right, the process got completed so quickly. I'll click reset and let's see what the result is. <laughs> Here you go. The result definitely doesn't look accurate. You can see the values are just repeated. Let me tell you why this happened. I will first resize Internet Explorer a little bit so I get to show you both the windows side by side. Now in the click go page, what we are telling Blue Prism is to click the go button and go to the wait stage, wait there until this result text appears and then end this action which means it will go to the next action which is read the result. But the problem is when the go button is clicked, the web page takes a second to even start loading the page. So there is a time delay between clicking this button and getting to this white screen. But before it gets to the white screen, 
the previous result is still there and blue prism will think the result has already appeared and that's why it moved to the next stage which is read result and that's the same reason why it copied the same result over and over so how do we resolve this one way is to add a static wait time of say two seconds between the click stage and the dynamic wait stage but there's a better way when the result gets loaded after you click the go button you can see that this area displays the input value and the from currency which we entered into these fields. So instead of checking if this result exists, what if we can check if this number and the currency matches the one that we entered here? That will be a better way to accomplish this. So we will capture this element and ask the wait stage to check if this element exists and if it matches with our input value and from currency. So I'll go back to the application modeler, launch the application, click the go button to get to the result page, click add element, I'll name it as result from currency, and if I click identify, I can highlight this entire area, 1CAD equals. So I'll capture that, sort by match column, uncheck all blank values, and I will also uncheck the parent URL. Then sort by match column again, and you have only four attributes now. So we can ask the wait stage to check if this area exists. But we don't want to check only if it exists. We actually want to check if it exists with the same input value and from currency we gave. So we will check the value and we will set this as a dynamic attribute so that we can pass it through a data item. I'll click apply and OK. Now we need to get the input value and from currency from the process to this object. So I'll double click start, click add enter the name input value, set the data type to number and click this button to create a data item. Then I'll add the second input, name it as currency, set the data type as text and create the data item. I'll click OK. Now we need to pass these two parameters as a dynamic attribute in the format we saw in the application modeler one space CAD space equals, which is basically concatenation of input value space, currency space equals. So we need to form that text using these two data items. So we will delete this link, add a calc stage, drag and drop input value, put an ampersand character which is used to concatenate text, and we need to add a space, so we will put a space between double quotes, then ampersand, drag and drop currency, again an ampersand, then a space followed by equal to within double quotes. So it will take the input value, which will be a number that we give, add a space, then add the from currency, and then add a space followed by equals. We need to store this in a data item, so I will type the name as result from currency and click create. Now let's join the links. And we will test this calculation. So I'll enter the input value as 10, currency as USD, click reset. And if I step through, all right, you can see the result from currency data item has got the text we need. So I will clear the input value. And currency. Now we will go to the wait stage, replace this result with result from currency, leave the condition as check exists equal to true, and then we will go into params and pass this result from currency as a dynamic attribute. And click OK and OK again.
and we will save the process. Next, we need to pass these inputs from the process. So I will go to the process studio, double click the stage, and you can see the two inputs. I will enter the value for input value as input collection dot amount. And for currency, it will be input collection dot currency. I'll click OK and we will save the process. Now if I click reset and go, you can see that it is still fast at the same time waits for the fields to appear and only then it moves to the next stage. Okay, the process has completed the run and if I go to the Excel sheet, excellent, it has captured all the values accurately. So I hope now you have a clear understanding on how to use weight stage and dynamic attributes. In the next video, we will talk about exceptions.